Okay, if you remember where we left off on the last lesson, we set this application up so that it can record our voice. It can submit that to ChatGPT and ChatGPT can come back with a response. We're not yet printing that to the screen and we're not yet reading that aloud through the computer audio. So let's run through what it looks like right now. What U.S. women's singles player won the most tennis titles? Ask the question. The response comes back over here in the console. So we want to add that on screen. We want to speak it out loud in audio. Let's get into it. We are successfully listening for ChatGPT's response. We're not writing it yet to the screen, so let's handle that. And I'm just calling this write AI response file. So let's define that. And then we're going to call another function to the server to generate the actual audio file of the response. And it's going to give us back a speech file. We're going to assign that to a global variable that we can reference at any point. And then we will play the audio response, passing in the speech file. And when that's done, we'll handle what to do when the audio finishes. That'll happen within the play audio response. If there's any errors, we're going to log the errors. That's going to cover our bases there. You can see we've got a number of functions happening here. We've created write AI response, but we also need to define a function for generate AI response file, to do, things I haven't gotten to yet. I write these to do comments and then play audio response. Same thing, to do. So let's go ahead and see where we're at there. Start the server, refresh. Who has the record for the most women's tennis titles in history? Get that response back, and now we see it on screen here. This is going to be our generate AI response file function. And familiar pattern, we're going to return a promise when we have a response from the server at this generate AI response file endpoint, which we need to create. Now, I'm noticing that we're passing in the AI response. We don't need to do that because the server already has it. So let's go find that function. And I've been using this a few times, but if you just hold command, if you're on a Mac and click on the name of a function, it will take you to the next point where it is used. So that's an easy way to jump back and forth to places where you're trying to find a function name. So here it's where I passed it, but we can take that out. And the reason I realized I'm using the get method, if I actually did want to pass that AI response file onto the server, I would need to use a post request, not a get request. So now let's jump over to the back end and add that API endpoint. Now let's see if we can actually find this via search. It's because I know Google's documentation can be difficult to track down. Here we go. We've got a link to documentation, and yet this is not the actual documentation. So we need to click on something. Let's try this quick start. And what we actually want is use client libraries. This is really hard to find just via a search or via Google Cloud's menus. So that's how I found this thing. And then it's going to tell you in Node.js how to install the package and how to use it. It's going to give you an example. So familiar process for us. I'm going to install the library. npm install. And there it's been added to our package JSON. And then we want to make a function, generate AI response file. We don't have that yet. So let's go where our APIs are declared. It was a get request. And our code is going to go in here. So Remember, we got it to require the library. Let's do that up here. Write a note for ourselves. And then back in our function here, I'm going to make a log to know that I've hit this API endpoint properly. And then this is the configuration for the text-to-speech library. We're going to call it a speech request. We're going to pass in that AI response. And then we're picking a voice. Now, Google Cloud has a bunch of different voices you can pick. 
I've just got a random one in here. It's going to be a U.S. English speaker and the gender is male. And I've put a note here as to what your different options are. And then for the configuration of our actual audio, we can specify the encoding and there are various options there, but because we're playing for the web, a good option here is of course an MP3. So that's our speech request. And then what we're going to get back is an array. And in that array, we're expecting a speech response, which we're getting from this TTS client dot synthesize speech, speech request. Now I'm not sure if I have created this variable yet. I have not. So let's do that. So we have our speech client. What we don't have is our text to speech client. So TTS client, I think we called it, instantiates the library in a variable that we can use. So remember, if we option click, we can jump back to where we used that variable. So once we have our response, we need to write that to a file. So here's the code I'm using for that. I'm going to create a, a file name and remember all that stuff we imported way up here at the top of the file in the first video. Here's where we're going to use that stuff. This UUID v4 is a library that's just going to give us a random ID. And that ensures that if multiple people are using this thing, they're all getting different file names. Then I'm going to generate a location on the server where I'm going to save that file. So we need to create that function. Then I'm just debugging what that path is. I'll actually comment that out for now. And then this FS promises is a file system library built into node that generates a promise so that when we've successfully written this file to the server, it's going to allow us to receive a response and then return that to the client. So that's what we're doing here. We're saying write the file in binary, then once that's done, return a response with a 200 status code, passing along the file name. And we're going to use that file name in an audio player and play it back for the user. Okay, so back in the front end, remember we stubbed out all these functions and we've received the AI response file and we're setting that to our global speech file variable. I don't think, yeah, I haven't set that up yet. So let global speech file. Now we have something to assign it to. And then we're going to try to play the audio response and log any errors. So let's jump into that play audio response file. So we have a to-do here. I'm going to replace this code. And so when I pass in this speech file, I want to find my audio player HTML element. I'm doing that with a variable called audio player, which is finding this class name. And if we open up index.html, we know that the class name matches here. This is our audio element. So that's going to give us a reference to that element. And then I'm going to set the source dot source equal to the path where that file is slash speech file dot mp3. So I'm going to need this response files directory. That's where they're going to be stored. Then I'm adding a listener. I'm saying when the file has finished playing, call this handle audio response function, which I've pasted down here below and give it the file that it's going to need. And what that file is going to do, it's going to clear the audio transcript out of memory. It's going to clear the audio response from the screen as well. It's going to clear the transcription from the server and it's going to delete the file. So we need to set all of that stuff up. I'm coming at you with a big copy paste here, starting with this clear audio transcript function, which just finds the audio transcript container and it clears it out. Same thing with the audio response, clears that text out from the screen. Then we need to clear it out on the server. We need to set that variable to null. So we have this handle server clear transcription function, which returns a promise, hits an endpoint of clear transcription on our API, and then resolves the promise. That's all familiar stuff. Same thing with the handle delete speech file, only this time we need to know which speech file to delete. So we are using a post request this time, and we're passing in this JSON object a speech file. So the body of our request is going to contain the speech file path that we want to delete. JSON stringify passes it in a way that the server can understand. Once that's done, we clear out our global speech file variable here on the client. 
and resolve that promise. So that will move through all these four function calls of the handle audio response finished. That way, if we want to do another request, we're good to start over again. Okay, we're getting close, promise. So back to the back end here, we had a few API endpoints that we needed to define. Let's put them down here at the bottom. Okay, so we have this clear transcription endpoint and it's going to clear out the stream script, which is everything that's been recorded from that user. It's going to clear the recognize stream and it's going to clear the recording. So it's going to tell Google Cloud Speech to stop trying to understand what we're saying. And it's going to tell our audio recorder to stop recording. So I've got those two functions here. Let's move them out. So all the API endpoints are together. You can put them up here. And taking a quick look at each of these, we're just checking to make sure we have a recognized stream. If so, we end it. We remove the listener for recognizing data. And then we set this to null. And then as far as the clear recording, that's much easier. We just say recording.stop and recording equals null. So you remember over here, we had handle server clear transcription, but we also needed to handle delete speech file, which is looking for this endpoint, delete response file. So we needed to find that here. So I'm gonna do another copy paste and here's our API endpoint. We're passing in, remember this is a post request, the speech file that we want to delete. We're getting the path on our server to that speech file because this is just passing the name of the file, not where it lives on the server. And then we're using Node's file system to unlink, which is essentially the same as delete the speech file path. If there's an error, we return the error. Otherwise, we say, good to go, file's been deleted. So this get speech file path, I don't think we've defined that yet. So we need to do that. Let's put it way up here. So we're defining that function here. It's going to accept a speech file name as a parameter, and it's going to take the response file directory and add to that the speech file name .mp3. But we also don't have this response file directory variable yet. Uh, up here, we defined a couple of directories. Let's just put that in here, response file directory. And that's going to take the public directory and just add to that response files. That's where our mp3s are going to live. I said we should be testing often, and we've written a lot of code without testing. So let's make sure we do that now. Let's start my server, and let's try this again and see if we've got this working. We should be able to hear ChatGPT speak its response back to us instead of just writing it to the screen. What U.S. women's tennis player has won the most titles? As of September 2021, the U.S. women's tennis player with the most titles is Serena Williams. She has won a total of 73 WTA singles titles and 23 Grand Slam singles titles. Okay, so looks like our speaking functionality worked. It cleared the transcripts from the screen as well, uh, but we're getting an error here. Error deleting audio, no such file or directory. And then it gives us a path and it has an undefined MP3. So it's not getting the name of the file correctly. And this is helpful because I can show you some basic debugging if you're not familiar. It's telling us where this error is occurring. It's occurring in main.js line 171. So if I click on that, you can see here, this is happening inside our handle delete speech file. And the data that's coming back is telling us that it's undefined. So we know where to look in main.js for the problem. Line 171, there's no data. Handle delete speech file is called here. And I can see the problem. I never passed this speech file variable. So it comes into this function, but it never goes back out. Now this function has a speech file that it can pass along to the back end. So let's try that out again. And you can see, actually, if I open this directory, I've got two MP3s and they haven't been deleted. They should have been deleted. Let's just listen to them and, and see what the response is. As of September 2021, the U.S. women's tennis player with the most... So sure enough, that's the recording of our response. I'll go ahead and delete these so it's empty for our next test. 
Oops. Try this again. What U.S. women's tennis player has won the most singles titles? As of September 2021, the U.S. women's tennis player with the most singles titles is Serena Williams. She has won a total of 73 WTA singles titles in her career. So I think this is actually a good place to stop with this tutorial series. We've got an LLM that we can talk to. It can talk back to us. We can record multiple times. And obviously there is some cleanup that needs to happen. We've still got some errors with closing down a stream and starting a new one. If we wanted to make a full-blown application out of this, we'd need to be able to handle concurrent users and things like that. But this will get you started. Hopefully you go and build something cool. And if you do, I'd love to hear about it. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. I will post the code that we ended up with here as well as a version where I clean up some things and deal with some of these uh, final little tidbits and errors that we're getting. Thanks for watching.